Yes, that's exactly it. I see you're also versed in the noble art of mechanical engineering. There's a behavior control terminal in the other room. It should have options to change how the mechanicals act, including whom they shoot at. Oh, now that reminds me. You'll need my passcode to access the behavior control terminal. Here, let me just write it down for you. Funny thing. I was working on a logic module just before the mayhem started. Security chief found me and confiscated the logic module. The tail. Definitely start with the tail. If you're feeling adventurous, the ears are a particular delicacy. Jimmy'd open the vending machines. That lasted a good couple of months. Eventually, I had to resort to more unconventional means of filling my insides. Mechanicals lost their bolts. Opened fire on anything that moved. It was pandemonium. I was on cleaning duty at the time. My old boss had me scrubbing pipes when the killing started. So, as usual, I missed out. we do this, there's no going back. Hey, mister? Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you. Do you understand what you're about to do? I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. They don't deserve to be punished. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something. Really? I mean, wow. Thanks. I, no one's ever told me those words in that order. I think you did the brightest thing you could send the power back to the planet. I care for, even if they ain't care much for me. Home is where the heart is. Marauders took that saying a little too literally. What happened? Sprat fell into a transformer again? Food's bound to spoil at this rate. That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock, so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me. Why did you do it? 
You want my flock wasting their lives in that cannery? Fine. Go and talk to them. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Tell Reed that I can make his people healthy again. I can end their plague. Start a new garden right in the cannery. Three square meals for every man and woman in Edgewater. Tell him how I've made the veil bloom again. The soil has whispered its secrets to me, and I alone know how to breathe life back into the earth. The secret is human corpses. I've been grinding them up in my fertilizer for years. Marauder, worker, don't matter much to me. The human body is rich with nutrients. I have got a means to cure the plague. And I will not share that cure until Reed leaves town. Those are my terms. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away. But Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. Said the medicine would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered my belongings, and left. That's as much of the story as you need to hear. Everybody keeps staring at me. It's not my fault the power's dead. No kidding. Really? Well, which one? Look at that! Building a computing machine out of Spectrum Potatoes, a primer. I'm just glad it survived all these years. I appreciate you going through all that trouble. In fact, I put aside something special. On the off chance that somebody'd search out those data pads for me. Well, don't keep me in suspense. Ain't that just ironical? If I'd worked a little longer back at the cannery, I might have found this myself. Two whole data pads? Be still my beating heart. Oh, almost forgot your payment. Well, don't keep me in suspense. The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible. You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. That's a complete set. All three parts. I'm gonna be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen. Um, aside from you, Ms. Parvati, I swear, I'll do you proud. I'm glad we could help, Thomas. I've been saving something for you. Just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit. I've been thinking about going back. I'm not much used to anybody here. I get sick thinking about working at the cannery. I can't do that again. You know something? I think you're right. The town could use another engineer, and I'm on my way to becoming one. I could do a lot of good in Edgewater. Maybe even keep a garage of my own with a little workbench and my very own toolbox. It's just... Adelaide's never gonna forgive me. Not in a hundred years. I go crawling back to my old life in Edgewater and... I'm as good as dead to her. You know where to find me.
I don't know what you did to talk some sense into Zoe, but I appreciate it. The matter's been weighing on me. Zoe came back, but I couldn't keep her from slipping out in the first place. Who's to say I could keep marauders from slipping in? I don't see us lasting more than a couple of weeks out here. I'm loath to admit it. We're gonna have to make our peace with Thompson and hope he takes us back. Listen, we go back to Reed, hat in hand, begging for our old jobs back. Well, Adelaide's not gonna forgive us. She never talked to us again. Sure, suit yourself. I'll be here. Somebody's been running around town raving about a colony ship. Plague must have gone into their brain matter. I can't say I'm pleased, but what's done is done. Oh, I'm an actuary. That means I keep tabs on a worker's living expenses. How much it costs to feed, clothe, shelter, bury, and replace your average human worker. Technically, I'm employed by the Spacer's Choice Department of Human Resources. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes. But I have done my best for this town. I am a Spacer's Choice man. My father was a Spacer's Choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned-up freelancer, but it is my home. I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment is a good work ethic. You are disparaging our parent company, and it is not appreciated. We are a Spacer's Choice Saltuna cannery. We eat Saltuna here, and only Saltuna. The Saltuna's been a mite bland ever since Adelaide left, and we don't get as much Saltuna these days, so we've had to improvise to meet quotas. We've added wood chips, some mushrooms, a bit of sand, tossed some canid bits in our processor ones. It all tastes like Saltuna in the end. Couple years, give or take, right around the time the first wave of plagues hit the town. Now listen, I do not know what pretty rhetoric Adelaide has fed you, but plagues are a simple fact of life. You will excuse me for being skeptical. How exactly is Adelaide growing crops in barren soil? If Adelaide's found a way to feed her people and cure the plague, then she deserves this office more than I do. I won't stand in her way. My life here is ended. Give me a little time to settle my affairs. I'm sure Adelaide will be glad to see the back of me. I do. Adelaide's found a cure for the plague, and she knows how to tend to crop. She's what this town needs. I have always tried to do right by my town. It has never been easy. A couple months ago, I might have put in for a transfer. It's a big colony. Spacer's Choice has other towns. Now, I couldn't show my face in any of them. No such thing as an honorable resignation. Suppose I could find a place outside the walls, or put in for early retirement. I don't know. I could see myself lasting a week.
Look at that. The snakes come back. I never thought I'd see the day that Reed Thompson abandoned his post. Suppose we all have a breaking point. Suppose it's time our flock made our way back to Edgewater. We must tend to what remains of the town and carry on with our lives as best we may. You're vexing to me, you know? Injuring us with one hand, helping us with the other. Here, I'm giving you something to leave us be. It's a ransom, you understand, not a reward. This don't put us on even footing, you understand. But it is a start. I might turn that old cannery into a garden. Got ourselves a whole cemetery bursting with bodies. I need some time to gather my personals. Long walk back to Edgewater. Got a considerable burden to carry. One of us want to go see what happened? Adelaide's okay. Sorry. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what to do, is all. Adelaide said that? Was she sober at the time? I never imagined she'd step foot in Edgewater long as Reed ran the town. Something must have changed in Edgewater. Adelaide's good as family. If she's going back, so are we. Never liked Reed much. Can't say I'm sorry he's gone. Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship. Working on a real engine. Belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but... Every time I think of going back, I get this... sinking feeling. Well, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yeah. I've been thinking about that. Edgewater was on the verge of collapse before you showed up. You sent them power, and now the town might see another season. And you talked Miss McDevitt into coming back to town. Maybe one day, Edgewater will have a garden where that cannery once stood. You ain't exactly a stranger anymore. You've done some kindness hereabouts. I wouldn't mind following somebody like that. I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. 
What can I do for you, Captain? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities.
It's a fine new day in Edgewater. The cannery hums, streetlights and faces glow. I suppose this means the two of you were able to sort out the matter? I am somewhat taken aback by that. Given the heat between her and Mr. Thompson, what deal did you strike with her, I wonder? From our own graveyard, just outside the gates, and Silas had not even an inkling. What do they pay the man for? He spends all day digging graves, Vicar, sir. Sometimes he's got to sleep. Yes, of course. Uh, my reaction was unreasonable. I'd need to give it careful consideration before answering. If it does improve the soil, it would seem to be a benefit overall. Once the spark of life is fled, the mortal form is but unanimated matter, comprised of the same elements as the rest of the universe. We inter for the comfort of the living, not the benefit of the dead. While distasteful, I would judge Ms. McDevitt's actions beneficial to the greater good. then I would counsel them to work through their emotions and assess the matter rationally. Animals are ruled by their hearts. Humans were gifted with intellect for a purpose. I've never seen you before, and there's been no paperwork indicating a transfer. Half the time it's wrong, but a new worker without paperwork? Unheard of. Also, you lack the distinctive worker gaze. Usually either a deadening behind the eyes, or in some rare cases, a wild-eyed frenzy, like a trapped animal. Pretty universal here, except for Miss Holcomb, who for some reason doesn't seem to have much to say to me. Isn't that right? It's just... there's more to it all than numbers. Sorry. Oh, nothing could be further from the truth. I'm simply bemoaning the level of spiritual awareness in this town. Yes, yes it is. But it's my job, and I take it very seriously. I must double my efforts to elevate my flock. These are good, hard-working people here. Wonderful. This is fantastic. Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait, what the fuck is this? Is this French? I can't fucking read French. <laughs> it's a law-forsaken joke is what it is. French. Ha! I was so high and mighty preaching to the yokels about following the plan while fighting it at every turn. There is little more important than such a precious rare text. I've spent my life searching for the keys to unlocking the secrets of the universal equation that underlies the plan. I had hoped this book held some of those answers. I became so desperate, I even got myself assigned to this plague-ridden backwater to find the damn thing. All the time and suffering I've spent. Wasted. Please, those dolts. Nothing could be more excruciating than discussing the true nature of reality with people who have no interest beyond their next Aether Wave program. But that's neither here nor there. What I need to do now is to find a translator, obviously. But to do that, I'll first need to secure transport. You have a ship. Perhaps I could make myself of use to your crew.
Certainly. I already gave you most of my money, but I can offer you free spiritual counseling, and I'd be happy to watch your back. I'm pretty handy with a tossball stick, or any blunt instrument, really. I'm also a passable gun hand, if it comes to that. I can usually talk my way out of conflict, though. Oh, I'm fairly competent at hacking computers as well. Fantastic. I promise you won't regret this. Edgewater's gonna miss you. Folk here always had good things to say about their vicar. Thank you, Ms. Holcomb. I'll be glad for the change of scenery, and to leave this place behind. It is my esteemed pleasure to serve as your crew vicar, Captain. Work your jaw on some spacer's chaw. Go right ahead. Plague. I don't know anything about a plague. We are the very picture of hot-blooded physical vigor. You have got the wrong idea about me. I've got nothing that needs hiding. Some of us who get sick are liable to exaggerate the conditions of that sickness, but the fact is, if you work hard, you have got no cause to worry. Spacer's choice is built on love, and like any real love, it is cold and tough when needs must. Medical treatment is commensurate with our value to society. Spacer's choice will dispense medicine for the indispensable worker. Natural selection at work. Then the hand of medical science will not grace you with its touch, and you must recover on the virtue of your own grit. Listen, you mind if we talk about something else? Rambling about company, go right ahead. Rations yet? Yep. Two whole cans of salt tuna. Keep your distance, friend. Sick house is no place for a traveler. Things are changing around the Vale. Don't matter much to me, though. Graves still need filling. Welcome back, Captain. All systems are now operating within acceptable parameters. Shall I take our ship into orbit? We have received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. 
Experiencing any uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, uh, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the ground breaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia, and in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Kelly. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting-edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. I've shut off the visual feed from my ocular inputs in the captain's quarters, so you're free to disrobe whenever you'd like. Get yourself at home, Captain. Yeah, so this is my hiding spot now. I was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so here I am. Cozy like, ain't it? Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. Not on the regular. Once in a great long while, a Saltuna boat would break down on the pad. He'd always bring me along for those. Mostly, he did the same as me. Kept Bess, I, I mean, the, the cannery, running. Turned loaders, plumbing and electricity, some plastering. I never got the hand of that. He meant funny as in odd. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. 
That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. Well, because they were hoping their own kid would get the job and get sent back to Edgewater. When folk go away for schooling, they don't get back to where they begun. Not usually. You go straight to your first job, wherever the company's got an opening. Well, it ain't exactly cruel to have a promise of a paying job. And that's all it is. You go where the company needs you. Where your skills do the most good. Well, they're powerful good tests. They rattled off this whole list of names we'd worked on. With fancy bits hanging off them. Doctors and Esquires and the Thirds. Even if you don't believe they actually catch what everybody's best at, everybody's got to take them. So at least it's fair-ish. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. Oh, there were a whole lot of reading, not nearly enough doing. Like, before they'd issue you a wrench, they wanted an essay on the design of different wrenches. Then there'd be quizzes on company regulations for storage and maintenance of wrenches. As soon as I got permission, I spent all my time in the machine shop. They had all manner of parts, but they didn't want me using them, so I had to sneak them sometimes. I even slept in there, had a hammock tied up in the rafters. Before I left, I installed a little skylight for myself so I could see the stars. When an engine came in, I'd strip it down and rebuild it. I mostly built for myself, custom tools, Little mechanical critters to talk to. When my roommates tried to talk, I'd get so nervous I'd be drenched in sweat. It was easier for everybody when I stayed off on my own. I doubt any of them remember me now. Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big ol' hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower. And stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. Oh gosh, <laughs> look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. That's in pretty good shape considering how hard Mr. Hawthorne ran it. It's a Yakita LHA-120, A2 model, I'm pretty sure. The Block 2 design scooshed in extra cargo space, but didn't change the stock engines. Probably a touch underpowered, huh? Accurate in all particulars. I conclude you are Edgewater's board... Fly-by-wire's pretty normal. Or at least ways that's what I read in the trades. I've never been on a real ship before. Hello! I am not a board-certified mechanic, but my dad was. He taught me all he knew. Do you understand? Speech recognition is one of the many skills I have been programmed to simulate. You're not simulating it, you're doing it! I asked a question and you answered it. I am gratified you consider this facsimile convincing. I am at your disposal, Ms. Carbati. You will find the technical schematics in the engineer's locker. Though I'm afraid Captain Hawthorne has lost the owner's manual. I don't see any holes in the hull. I'll take a good squint at her, make sure everything's tip-top. 
but I think we're cooking with plasma torches. You can do that, you know. My dad taught me how to make grilled cheese sandwiches with a plasma torch. By verity, by strength. What are we contemplating today? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was... Infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. My parents, ironically. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith. A faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. They thought I was fighting the plan, should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige, but that was not me. The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, the Grand Plan. Is the Grand Architect a consciousness? A natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. What about you? What's your story? And how did he do that? Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What are you going to do now? That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? Oh, I see. You have my condolences. Bokonu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony. Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, 
in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra II some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. That's a good question. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the philosophist's off-world destination. Thank you, Captain. 